This Emirati entrepreneur is using an innovative technique to grow food in the desert. He's using a fish farm. Picture this. You're standing in the middle of the Saudi Arabian desert where temperatures regularly soar past 104 degrees Fahrenheit and rain is so rare it's practically a myth. The landscape stretches endlessly. 95% of the country is nothing but sand, rocks, and brutal heat. This is where plants go to die, right? Wrong. In 2023, Saudi Arabia threw away over 100,000 tons of fish in these very deserts. But here's the twist that'll blow your mind. They're not throwing them away. They're using them as weapons. Weapons against the desert itself. What sounds like environmental madness is actually the most genius strategy you've never heard of. While the rest of the world struggles with food security and climate change, Saudi Arabia has figured out how to turn the ocean's bounty into desert-conquering ammunition. They're literally farming fish in places where nothing should survive, then using those fish to transform barren wasteland into thriving green oases. This isn't some small-scale experiment either. By 2030, they plan to produce 600,000 tons of seafood annually, most of it in the middle of nowhere. And the craziest part? It's working so well that countries with perfect growing conditions are now importing food from the Saudi desert. But here's what nobody's talking about. This isn't just about fish. It's about completely rewriting the rules of what's possible on our planet. Let me break down exactly how they're pulling off this impossible feat. Because the strategy is pure genius. Saudi Arabia has always been stuck between two massive bodies of water, the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, yet dying of thirst in the middle. For decades, they overfished these waters like everyone else, hauling in 88,000 tons of seafood annually by 2012. But then they realized something that changed everything. The ocean was running out of fish, but the desert was running out of life. Enter Saudi Vision 2030, their moonshot program to become completely oil independent. While most people focus on Neom, their futuristic city project, the real revolution is happening in aquaculture. And in just over a decade, they've grown from 17,200 tons to 140,000 tons of fish production. That's an 800% increase in desert-based fish farming. But here's where it gets wild. They're not just farming regular fish. They're raising salmon and trout in the middle of the desert. Species that need cold water are now thriving in Saudi Arabia's brutal heat. The facility in Hale produces 5 million young salmon annually and 100 tons of market-ready fish. These desert-raised salmon are being shipped to Japan, South Korea, and Australia, countries with perfect natural conditions for fish farming. Here's what most people don't know about fish farming. Every fish is basically a living fertilizer factory. When fish digest food, they release waste packed with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These aren't just random chemicals, they're the holy trinity of plant growth. Nitrogen feeds the green parts of plants, leaves and stems. Phosphorus powers the energy-intensive processes that help plants survive drought. Potassium regulates water balance, controlling how much moisture plants retain during extreme heat. It's like creating a custom-made survival cocktail for desert plants. But here's the breakthrough. Instead of treating fish waste as a problem to dispose of, Saudi scientists realized it was liquid gold. This nutrient-rich water transforms regular irrigation into a supercharged plant growing system. Saudi researchers ran controlled experiments comparing regular water irrigation versus fish farm water irrigation. The results? Date palms irrigated with fish water produced dates that were 26% heavier, 23% longer, and had 43% more moisture content. Basil plants increased their wet weight by 203%. These aren't small improvements. Their game-changing differences? The National Aquaculture Group supplies 100,000 tons of seafood to 32 countries while simultaneously feeding the desert. They've mastered the entire production cycle, from hatcheries to processing facilities, all located in sandy regions that shouldn't support any life. You might wonder how fish survive in 104 degrees Fahrenheit plus desert heat. The answer is next-level technology that constantly monitors temperature, oxygen levels, and food supplies. These facilities create ocean-like conditions in the middle of nowhere using advanced filtration, cooling systems, and closed-loop water circulation. They're using three irrigation methods that maximize every drop. Drip irrigation delivers water directly to plant roots with minimal waste. Subsurface irrigation uses buried pipes to feed root zones without surface evaporation. Micro-sprinkler systems target individual plants while cooling the surrounding air. The most advanced facilities use aquaponics, a closed-loop system where fish waste feeds plants, and plants clean the water for fish. The Hale facility produces 10 tons of fruits and vegetables annually using this method. 
While that sounds small, remember this is happening in one of the hottest, driest places on Earth. Plot twist. 47% of Saudi Arabia's aquaculture production is shrimp. In 2023, they produced 66,400 tons of shrimp in the desert. Nakwa uses seawater trucked directly from the Red Sea, then employs bioflock technology where beneficial bacteria break down waste and serve as additional shrimp food. They're even farming algae in the desert. King Abdullah University of Science and Technology operates a commercial-scale algae facility producing 100 tons of dry algae biomass annually. They've developed proprietary strains of spirulina and chlorella adapted to seawater, eliminating freshwater needs entirely. This brings us back to Neom, Saudi Arabia's futuristic city project. Topian, a company linked to Neom, plans to build one of the Middle East's largest fish farms, producing 20,000 tons of seafood annually. But here's the real purpose. The nutrient-rich water will feed the Neom Regreening Initiative, which aims to restore 3.7 million acres of land and plant 100 million native trees by 2030. This isn't just about Saudi Arabia solving their food security problems. This is about completely rewriting what's possible on our planet. Every desert-based aquaculture facility serves double duty, producing food while fighting desertification. The nutrient-rich water doesn't just feed plants. It improves soil moisture retention and supports beneficial microbial life. This transforms barren sand into fertile soil that can support vegetation for decades. The new vegetation creates its own microclimate. Trees and shrubs provide shade, reduce ground temperature, and through transpiration, they raise air humidity. This makes conditions more favorable for other plants, creating a self-sustaining cycle of desert transformation. Saudi Arabia's aquaculture industry is targeting 250,000 tons of production by 2030 through Nakwa alone. That's nearly half of their 600,000-ton national goal. They're not just becoming self-sufficient, they're becoming exporters to countries with naturally perfect growing conditions. Here's what makes this truly revolutionary. If Saudi Arabia can farm fish and grow food in some of the harshest conditions on Earth, imagine what this technology could do in other desert regions. The Sahara, the Gobi, the Atacama, vast areas of useless land could become food-producing powerhouses. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Agriculture announced a 430,000-square-foot aquaponic farm in Jubail Governorate in 2024. This facility will enhance biodiversity, increase self-sufficiency, and improve food security while dramatically reducing water usage. And this is just one of many projects, most of which haven't been publicly announced yet. The next time someone tells you something is impossible, remember that Saudi Arabia is farming salmon in the desert and using fish waste to turn sand into gardens. They're not just adapting to harsh conditions, they're completely conquering them. This isn't just about fish or farming. It's about the fundamental human ability to look at a problem and flip it into a solution. Saudi Arabia took their greatest weakness, endless desert, and turned it into their greatest strength. The desert isn't dying anymore, it's being reborn, one fish at a time. The Saudis aren't waiting for perfect conditions, they're creating them. And that mindset might just be the most valuable thing you can take from this story.